fact that I'm now exhibiting in museums like in Hamburg, in Deichtorhallen or in Karlsruhe or now here in this wonderful place in Aarau is a pure uh, coincidence. I stopped what I call uh, the art race in 76 after I had quite interesting exhibitions, documenta, I had a one-man show at the Zurich Museum and so forth, but the art race was not the, the right thing for me. But I continued uh, to produce art. I exhibited in the gallery of a friend of mine, a very good friend and a writer in Zurich. So I never stopped uh, creating these uh, pieces, but of course, as another coincidence, Yellow became a well-known band and as we were only two people doing more or less everything from the videos to the production of the music to the management of the studio to the marketing, uh, this took a lot of energy and time and with Yellow we sold many million CDs and uh, Yellow became much more famous than uh, my art uh, project. And what we now see in the museum here uh, is only here because uh, a friend of mine exhibited my work in a small gallery in Berlin and uh, the famous uh, collector and owner of his own museum which is now integrated into the Eichtorhallen, Mr. Harald Falkenberg, he saw that little exhibition and he was absolutely uh, surprised that somebody had done lots of things uh, that uh, other people did later. That was what interested him, that this Swiss guy, unknown, had done uh, 42 characters, which is what Cindy Sherman did later. Of course, she was not influenced by me at all, but I did it in 74 and she did it a little later. And then also I took uh, pictures of uh, very crazy little sculpture, pieces of sculptures, uh, and I just uh, took one a photograph of these uh, sculptures and then uh, they were destroyed again you know and uh, all the people did this later as uh, here it's very much in fashion now uh, uh, to do this and this is what interested Falkenberg uh, to show this guy who uh, was unknown he also did not care to be unknown and he took me sort of out of the dark into the limelight of his museum and from there on I had more museum shows and uh, galleries are uh, interested and so forth. So uh, it's a total coincidence. Before I had this important, so-called important exhibition in Hamburg, uh, I was ready uh, to transport all these products uh, that uh, came together over the years uh, to Argentina, where I produce wine, and I have a, a, an empty big uh, fruit packaging hall, and I wanted to put it all there and put it on the wall so that my children and grandchildren in whatever, when I'm gone, uh, back to the universe, see what this, uh, what this guy had done. But uh, I never intended any kind of a career with my art. It's really a surprise.
I never really plan things, you know, I mean, things very much come to me, like exhibitions come to me and the possibility to, uh, uh, to make a movie comes to me. I'm not fighting hard to get these things. I'm more like a piece of driftwood uh, in the ocean and sometimes it, it, it strands, it lands somewhere and uh, creates its little roots and then maybe some plants appear or, or not, you know. But uh, what I really love to do uh, is uh, movies because uh, when, you, when you shoot uh, a, a feature movie um, um, this to me is always the end of doubt, you know, because it's like when you board a sailing boat uh, and you have decided to cross the Atlantic, uh, uh, that's the end of doubt. The wind blows and you're on the boat and you decided to go and you have to go. And this is like when you do a movie, you're on the set every morning, you have to make all these decisions. There is an industrial process of movie making. You try to hold up uh, your little flag of the identity of what you want to do and uh, you go. And uh, that's one reason why I love uh, to do film. And I hope that some of the scripts that I have more or less ready are being turned uh, into films. But uh, I'm not sort of fighting for it like a mad dog. It either comes to me or it doesn't. My father never uh, influenced me in any of my decisions and uh, to study, to become a lawyer was more like a social cover. You know, when people ask me, what do you do? I said, well, I'm at the University of Zurich, I'm studying the law, but I have not really been there. You know, it was rather uh, a camouflage uh, for my career as a poker player and of a guy who didn't know what to do with himself. You know, I was pretty clueless at that time and started to more or less professionally gamble because when you're sitting at a poker table uh, you are just busy surviving you're not uh, caring about uh, who am I and what should I do and what's my life all about you're sitting at that poker play table like a boxer in a boxing ring and you try to to hit hard and to survive and that's the total escape from the real world and I did this for about uh, three years and slowly, slowly, slowly I started to do other things like the first thing I ever did really as a maybe filmmaker was uh, I borrowed a 16 millimeter camera of an uncle and uh, I took it apart and I learned how a camera works and I started to make my first little so-called experimental or underground films which I showed at these little underground experimental festivals and uh, as I did not have the money to, to put a sound to these films I always played live with my films in front of uh, the screen with, on a table I was sitting at the table and I created noise with empty cans and with a one string guitar my voice and so forth and this was indirectly leading to my career as a as a yellow singer you know but it's all a total coincidence I mean if I tell you other stories, how things came to me, people think uh, this guy's a liar. He doesn't want to uh, tell the world how hard he worked to get this. I'm quite good when I have something in my hands, when this piece of driftwood has landed somewhere. I'm, I'm a, a good worker, but I'm not uh, desperately uh, fighting to, to get things. Things always came to me and at the right time.
You know, the band Yellow, as you know, is not performing live because my partner Boris absolutely doesn't want to do this. And I love it uh, to be in front of an audience and have this uh, immediate thing of uh, like singing in the moment. You know, in the studio, you do it, you do it again, you have 150 tracks, you can make a fool of yourself. But when you're in front of an audience live, it's here and now. And I love this challenge. So I started a new band. Uh, typically for me being called out of chaos and with this band we were on tour we played the Volks, Volksbühne in Berlin and uh, some Montreux festival, Basel festival, some quite good uh, gigs uh, we had and that uh, tonight uh, with not the whole band but just with a piano player and the violin player who are part of my band uh, we are just performing three uh, songs and I see these performances uh, like on the same kind of level uh, as uh, whatever else I do. I just create an instant painting with my voice and my songs. Thank <laughs> you.